How do you know where the shadows will be? That's a question I got recently from a friend of mine as she was thinking about what she wanted to do with her garden over this next year. And she said, look, I understand that I need to know where the shadows will be and where the sun will be so that I know where I can plant vegetables to grow and where I can spend time hanging out in my garden in, in the middle of summer. Because if it's too sunny, I don't want to get completely roasted. And I also want to have enough sunlight to be able to grow the things that I want to grow. So how do you figure that out? So that is what we're going to talk about today. Welcome to Planning to Garden. I'm Ed Chandler. So today we're going to talk about a tool that you can use. And once you understand how it works, it's really simple. You can figure out the shadows at any time of year for any location on the planet. And so I'm going to show you how that works and how to do it for yourself. This is something that comes from the flow part of the HPF framework, and we talk about it in the Garden Vision Workshop because it's part of building that foundation of understanding that helps us craft a vision for our gardens that actually makes sense. So the tool we're going to use is called a sun path diagram. And to explain it, we'll be using the whiteboard. And also I need something else, uh, something like, let's use our magic wand here, swish and flick. Wow, that was easy. This thing really is handy. All right, well, this should help us explain it pretty well. So that and a whiteboard. Let's go to the board first. So this is the basic template for a sun path diagram. And to understand this, we're going to need to go through a couple of terms that you'll need to know. So those terms are azimuth, elevation, solstice, and equinox. And I'll show you how those fit on this chart. So on the sun path diagram, the azimuth is the direction uh, of the compass. So if north is at zero and you go around to east, 90, south is 180 degrees, west is 270 degrees. So you look at the azimuth angle, that'll tell you zero, you know, 30, 60, 90, 120, going around the, the circle so that you know what direction you're pointed. Then the elevation angle is, you can look at it this way, it's the elevation up from the horizon line. So 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 is, that the, is straight up and down. All right. Now that is what these lines here are representing is horizon 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 all the way to the, to the center. So the center of this circle is straight overhead. Then you have the solstice. The solstice is, is that period where the earth is tilted relative to the sun at its max point. And that means that in the northern hemisphere, at June 21st, we get our longest day of the year. And December 21st, we get our shortest day of the year. And the sun is making the lowest arc in the sky. And then the equinox is the point where we're halfway in between, where the earth and its orbit around the sun, keeping that, that angle that it has, when it's going around, if it's pointed at the sun, you know, with the pole is pointed at the sun, that's the solstice. When it comes around and it's halfway so that the earth spinning on its axis, there's a plane through the equator. And when that, when that line passes through the sun, that's the halfway point between the, the summer solstice and the winter solstice. And so that halfway point we call the equinox. So we can plot all of those on our sun path diagram. And so I'm going to do that. I've pulled up a, a sun path diagram for Sacramento, California, and I'm going to plot the key points of that here on this sun path diagram so that we can look at how that lays in. So we have the summer solstice here on this upper line and the winter solstice here down on this bottom line. And then the equinox is here in the middle. And so what this is showing is on this sun plot, the, the highest the sun gets and the lowest the sun gets. And so everything here in this range is the potential path of the sun. Uh, let me use a different color. So time of day. When you pull up a sun chart, it will give you hours. So on the Sacramento chart in the summer, the nine o'clock point is right about here. There's 9 a.m., 12 a.m., or 12 p.m., and then 15, which is 3 p.m. 
So this is 18, so this is 6 p.m. And then 2034. So that means at 8.30, basically, is when the sun hits the horizon line in summertime. And 5.42 a.m. is when it first hits the, the horizon line coming up. And so you have those times of day. So now you can look at this path over the, the time of day and say, okay, in the morning, at 9 o'clock in the morning, the shadows from this will be coming from almost due east. Just after 9 o'clock in the morning, the shadows will be coming from due east. And they will be at 10, 20, 30, 40, so let's say 9, 10, something like that. It'll be 40 degree, coming in at 40 degrees directly east. All right. So if we come over here and we say, okay, what does that look like? That looks like 40 degrees like this. So if you have an object, a person or a tree or something, and you look at that line, then you can say, okay, the shadow from that would be equivalent to that angle. And so that would be the, the shadow and it would be pointing due east. Uh, and it would be a little bit, the shadow would be a little bit longer than the object is tall because we're not quite at 45 degrees. If it was at 45 degrees, it would be a one-to-one, -one, you know, the height of the thing and the height of the shadow. So actually, that's an interesting point. This is something, something that we can do with this is to say, okay, if we come up 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, so we go right here in the middle, and we say, at what time of day, based along this line, do we hit 45 degrees? And so you could use that to measure the height of something very tall that you can't just run a tape measure up like a tree. You can say, okay, what time of day do I need to go and find that? So, you know, that's, if that's uh, 9, say that's 10, that's 11. So at 9.45, basically, is when we'd be at the point where the angle would be at 45 degrees, and so we know that the length of the shadow is the height of the object, right? So if I, if I do this at like this, like that, then it's a 45 degree angle, and so the base and the height of the triangle are going to be the same, right? X, X is X, and then that'll be X square root two the, for the hypotenuse. So that's a great way of coming up with the height of something that, you know, like a great big tall tree that you can't just put a tape measure on, um, is to find that time of day. In the winter time, then you have something like nine o'clock is down here. So this would be nine. Noon would be about here. 15 is over here. So that's 15 is, is three o'clock, remember? And then at 1648, the sun hits the horizon. So that means on the shortest day of, e of the year, the sun hits dead level on the horizon line at 448 in the evening. All right. So that's one example of plotting the sun path for a particular location. So if you then wanted to say, okay, now I want to look at how long the shadows will be at a different time of day, you could come over here and say, okay, in the summertime, let's say in summer uh, solstice at three o'clock in the afternoon, I want to know how long the shadows will be. So we'll go to a different color here and we'll ask that question. Say, okay, uh, we are at, at 90 degrees here, 80 degrees here, 70 degrees, 60 degrees. So we're just above 60 degrees of an angle at three o'clock in the afternoon on the summer solstice. So let's draw that on here. If we do 60 degrees coming down, and so then the, the height of the shadows of this thing will be here. So they'll be shorter than the, the object and they'll be coming in right here. We're at 240, 240 degrees. So about, you know, a few more degrees, 245 degrees on the, the compass. So not south or west, but we're up here closer to west coming in this way at that length. So imagine, you know, you take this thing and you're, you're setting this thing like this and coming around. This is where I have a tool for this. This is where our magic bowl comes in really handy. This makes it really easy to, to think about this, right? What, what this chart is representing is actually a bubble like this. And so if you imagine that you put 90 degrees right there and 80 degrees and 70 degrees and 60 degrees 
50 degrees, and you're, you're working your way down. Now, if you take this chart and you start working your way down, say, okay, so if I'm 10 degrees above the horizon, I'm here, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, all the way to the top. And so now you can start to imagine this bubble coming, you know, coming across this bubble with this diagram. To say, okay, we're, you know, at 70 degrees, so our, our path, you know, if we, I guess we're going to need an east-west measurement like this. And our north-south. See, my wife is going to make me clean this bowl when we get done. So we've got our north, south, east, and west on our bowl. And we're going to say, okay, we're up here at 60 degrees over here uh, when we hit the horizon line. And then we're at about 70 degrees here for the summer solstice. So we're like that. And we cross over east at 10, 20, 30, 40, so about 40 degrees. So about here. So we're coming up on our bowl. Sun comes up. Like that. And then lands about like that. And so on our bowl, you can actually see on the dome of the sky, if you're sitting down here in the bottom of the bowl, like this, you can actually look at how the sun would come up and go around on that arc around this bubble until it hits the horizon line. And you can imagine yourself standing down here in the, the right in the dead center of the middle of that bubble so that you have that that arc and then in the winter time it would look more like right it would look more like that so can you see how that would make sense if we if we have the sun coming up in the the winter time it's at this really low angle and then in the summertime, it's at this much higher angle. And so these low, the low angle in the wintertime is going to give you those long, long shadows, but you have less sun to work with. And in the summertime, you've got the shorter shadows, more direct light overhead at the middle of the day. But you have a lot of time for the sun to be up in the sky, so you get a lot more heat. So that's what... That's a, a way to think about how to get your head around the orientation and the, the steepness of the shadows. Is imagine taking a flashlight to represent the sun and coming up around this arc that you've represented. Okay? And that's what the sun path diagram does. Now, let's say you were closer to the equator. Well, then the solstice would be above and below the east-west line, and the, the equinox would be in about the middle. And if you were in the southern hem hemisphere, let's say Australia, this picture would look reversed because, you know, you'd be, you'd, your, your arcs would be like this. It would be a clamshell, almost the reverse of this, and let's say Sydney. It would just flip up like that. So you're keeping track of north, south, east, and west. You're keeping track of your that's your, your azimuth, you're keeping track of your elevation above the horizontal, and then you look at these plots with the, the time values along these paths, and that'll tell you the, the angle to look down and where you are on the compass relative to that point. Your solstice is, is the minimum and maximum points, and the equinox is that, that place in the middle where it's just halfway along the path. You can use a bowl to help orient yourself for the, how those lines come up and around, okay? So now you know what a sun path diagram is. You know the difference between an azimuth angle and an elevation angle. You know the difference between a solstice and an equinox. And you know how to use a sun path diagram to figure out where you'll have sun and where you'll have shade at any point on the planet at any time of year. So your next step is to go online to guysma.com, and I've put a link in the show notes to make this easy. Go online and find a sun path diagram that fits closest to your location, and then use that to start figuring out where you'll have sun and where you'll have shade in your garden at different times of year. So go to guysma.com, and while you're in the show notes, please make sure that you sign up for the Garden Creator Studio newsletter. That's it for this episode of Planning to Garden. I'm Ed Chandler. And to the creator within you, best wishes.